Have you ever spotted an owl while driving? You do a quick and very legal U-turn just to find out that it's actually a plastic bag stuck in a tree? I'm Doug Hitchcock. My goal is to get the most people to see the most birds. And in this video, I'm gonna cover some of the optical illusions that regularly trick even some of the most experienced birders. Let's start with one that I see throw off birders all the time. This is categorized as a size distance illusion. And we'll start with one that's actually pretty easy to see but hard to explain, called the moon illusion. You've probably witnessed this illusion before, where the moon rising along the horizon looks huge. But when you see it again in an hour or two and it has risen into the sky, it shrinks back down to normal size. Of course the moon didn't change its size, but birders can be tricked by the exact same thing happening with birds flying over the horizon versus up in the sky. There have actually been books written trying to explain this illusion, but perhaps the oversimplified explanation that I like is called the apparent distance theory. The theory proposes that the moon on the horizon looks larger than the moon in the sky because it looks further away, mostly because there is nothing between us and the moon to help with our perception. Thanks to a phenomena called size consistency, or Emmert's law, we can perceive the distance of two identical objects based on their relative visible size. As an example, if you have a crow perched 10 feet away and one perched 20 feet away, the further one will look about 50% smaller. And that, I believe, is where this illusion is throwing us off. We do a horrible job estimating our distance from a bird, and that leads us to misjudge its size and ultimately misidentify it. The best example I've seen of this was with the famous stellar sea eagle that came to Maine's mid-coast for the last two winters. As this bird made headlines, we'd get reports of it, or at least what people thought was it, all over the state. And so many times I'd be chatting with these people on the phone and they'd say, well, I couldn't see the white shoulders, but it was huge, way too big to be a bald eagle. And knowing this illusion, I'd always ask, and it was remarkable to see how many times these observations were of birds soaring right over the tops of trees. You can always test if the moon actually is larger during a moon illusion by holding your thumb out at arm's length and compare the size of the moon to the tip of your thumb. A couple hours later, do the same size comparison and you'll see the moon hasn't changed at all. This is a good segue for us to talk about another illusion that shows up in birding, and one that's also used to describe the moon illusion, called the relative size theory. This states that the perceived size of an object depends not only on its retinal size, but also the size of the objects in its immediate visual environment. Perhaps the most famous example of this is called the Ebbinghaus illusion. Two circles of identical size are placed near to each other, and one is surrounded by large circles while the other is surrounded by small circles. As a result of the juxtaposition of the circles, the central circle surrounded by the large circles appears smaller than the central circle surrounded by the small circles. In birding, one of the first things we consider in a species identification is the size of an individual, and a good example we can look at is with gulls. Here on the east coast, our common gulls are the small ring-billed gull, medium herring gull, and the larger great blackback gull. I hope you can see how if you're scanning through a flock of gulls, a herring gull surrounded by great blackback gulls could appear smaller than one surrounded by ring-billed gulls. And so they probably aren't going to stand in perfect circles like this, but this illusion can throw you off even without the juxtaposition of the two on the inside. Last winter I got way too excited, and eventually embarrassed, when I spotted an apparently California-sized gull. I thought for sure it was smaller than the adjacent herring gulls, but only after taking dozens of photos and trying to get everyone on it did it land closer and next to other herring gulls that were exactly its size. This may actually be better explained by the Del Bouffe illusion. Often represented with an image like this, but distinct from Ebenhaus, is how, regardless of relative size, if the surrounding circles are closer to the central circles, the central circles appear larger. And if the surrounding circles are further away, the central circles appear smaller. A famous study of this was focused on dieting. It showed that people serving soup into bowls would often overserve themselves if they had a larger bowl. So maybe birders are more likely to assume yellow legs is something like a godwit if it's standing in a larger pool. Our next illusion to discuss is called the lightness or simultaneous contrast illusion. It occurs when two objects of the same size but different levels of brightness are placed next to each other. The object that is brighter will tend to look larger than the object that is darker. The classic example of this is the irradiation illusion. 
Here we have two equally sized squares at the center of equally large fields around them. This differs from the Del Boeuf illusion because their relative sizes are the same, but the white square still appears larger than the dark square. Now there is some really cool science into how neurons in your primary visual cortex respond to light, and I'll have to oversimplify it like this. Our visual system can be split into on neurons that are sensitive to light and off neurons that are sensitive to dark. These off neurons respond linearly to dark shapes on light backgrounds, but the on neurons respond disproportionately to light shapes on dark. That is to say that for the same amount of contrast, the on neurons have a bigger response. This is part of why it's often easier to read black text on a white background. And so you probably know that a white object is emitting more energy, or in our case with birds' white plumage, it's reflecting back more light than something that is dark. And combining that fact with our on neurons disproportionate response, we get to the explanation of why we perceive a white bird often being larger than it actually is. The last category of illusions that we should talk about have to do with blurriness. In birding, we encounter this with the limitations from our optics, whether it's from a quick observation or trying to discern details at a long distance. Blurriness can cause all sorts of distortions in what we see, making birds appear larger or stretched, or smaller and compressed. True colors can also be hard to interpret, which can make a small reddish-brown leaf sandpiper look more like a paler and larger semi-palmated sandpiper under blurry conditions. Blurry images can trigger the brain's pattern recognition processes, leading us to perceive images like faces, objects, or in our case, birds that aren't even there. This phenomena, known as pareidolia, is perhaps more popularly known from famous examples like people seeing faces in rock formations on Mars or thinking a chicken nugget looks like an Among Us character selling for $100,000. And in birding, this is why it's easy for us to turn distant leaves into perched songbirds or trash bag into owls. These are just some of the many ways our eyes can trick us into seeing things that aren't actually there, and I hope you keep these in mind, especially if you're being corrected on a misidentification. Remember how frustrated people were online when this photo of a black and blue dress made the rounds in 2015? Hopefully we can avoid those feelings next time your blurry pile of snow turns out to not actually be a snowy owl. Let me know in the comments if you've ever been tricked by an optical illusion that led to the misidentification of a bird. Keep in mind that the trickery of these illusions can actually get amplified by our confirmation bias, which is something you can learn about in my Rare Birds video. And make sure you are subscribed to keep getting these videos as they come out and help me with my goal of getting the most people to see the most birds. Thank you.